Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, quite a build-up and obviously no pressure to open the show uh, for this last um, session. But uh, sustainability, interesting that Tony made um, so many references to it there. Of course, that's my day job to lead Carillion's uh, sustainability strategy and delivery, not only here in the UK, but across the Middle East and Canada as well. That's, that's the scope of our operations. Um, so when we were looking at the exam question and thinking, you know, what does this session really mean? We're asking ourselves really how a lot of the pressures, a lot of the economic, environmental and social pressures on cities today, uh, how we as a contractor may deliver those, um, how we may respond to those, but more importantly, what opportunity does that present to the city makers of today and tomorrow uh, to do it well and to do it perhaps even better than we've been doing it so far uh, as a collective body? So I think my answer to the exam question would be, the way to respond to that pressure at the moment is to genuinely hold a lot of the delivery agents for city regeneration truly accountable for creating lasting social value. And that's what we think makes the difference in terms of approaching the city of tomorrow, lasting social value. It is the fundamental challenge we think presented to cities, which are so often seen as just a collection of businesses, a collection of workplaces, but they're, they're, they're often and usually the home to so many. So it's actually taking that home, taking that community, merging it with the challenges of that regeneration and then making that uh, come to life. That's part of what we do. That's part of how we approach this with a very balanced sustainability agenda across the economic side of responsibility, across the environmental side, but then finishing and really wrapping all of that around social responsibility and truly delivering some numbers and some promises. And if we can possibly do that, over-delivering. And I'll show you some of where that was uh, in a couple of the big projects we, we've been involved with recently. So if you think about the challenge of inner city regeneration, if you look at the sites of Battersea, if you look at the sites we've worked on, the Library of Birmingham, for example, inner city regeneration is effectively open heart surgery for cities. So when you're creating and taking a centre of a city, which if you look at Battersea, for example, has been derelict for so long, such a fantastically iconic building, in the heart of our wonderful capital city. When you take that and you produce that open heart surgery effect, social value is the beat of that heart. And if you get that social value right, so it isn't greenwash, it isn't just an empty promise, it genuinely changes lives, then you create and leave something behind that is far better than the buildings or the infrastructure that you would have built. That's what we're trying to do and that's what we're trying to invest in and we're trying to deliver on that promise. At Battersea, by creating local jobs, by creating 114 training opportunities for young people, by putting a business connector in there from business in the community for three years, three different people seconded into the area for three years, working with the local communities. I was there just myself two or three weeks ago. We were working with ex-offenders, with gang members, with people who were telling us stories that were simply a different kind of normal. But they're the Battersea community and they're the people we're looking to work with and leave some kind of lasting value with when we move on. And we do that through things like volunteering. We encourage our people to take up their six days volunteering allowance per year, six days a year, and do that in their local communities, whether it be through business skills or through helping the homeless or anything else that creates that lasting social value. So we're trying to create those coordinated, cohesive approaches to that we're trying to encourage and work with our supply chain subcontractors as well because, of course, that's how so many of these big projects are delivered. We're sponsoring the Supply Chain Sustainability School, a collaborative initiative across all of the construction sector. It's, it's not our idea, it's just something we're part of and it's something we really believe in and trying to push free virtual learning environment training and best practice and shared ideas between our supply chain subcontractors, working with and co-funding alongside our competitors because we believe that sustainable approach to things is the right thing to do for the cities of tomorrow and for the communities we're trying to create. So I think the way we try to deliver that, the way we try to bring that to life is through looking at the community needs. I think the worst thing any kind of contractor or company could do when they come into a community is to imagine they have all the ideas and all of the solutions and they can bring one size that will fit all. We start from a community needs plan where a lot of work has gone into trying to, to make that as flexible as possible, to listen to the local community organisations, listen to the schools, listen to the charities, listen to the causes, work through our business connectors and to understand what that community needs. And it may be the case that when we were working in Library of Birmingham, for example, it was a completely different context. So when we were in Birmingham, we were promising around 250 
yeah, local jobs, uh, working with the long-term unemployed, we managed to deliver 308. So not only are we trying to set a stretching target at the outset, but we're trying to over-deliver on it as well. And back to what I was saying at the start, I think the best thing that city makers can do is to hold us accountable at the tender stage and beforehand for making those big commitments, putting them into the bid, putting them into the tender, and making us deliver on them. Because that's the way we should be working and helping to create those communities overall so they'll last. And they'll last through volunteering, and if we get volunteers interested to the life of a project, they may stay connected to it for life. If you want to follow up more on what we mean by volunteering, we've set up a Sustainability Talk and News website. We would love for you to comment on it. It's an open digital platform. Any comments are welcome. You can Google Sustainability Talk and News, and you'll find that as a top hit. This month's hot topic is social value through volunteering. So we're trying to make it real. We're trying to make this something that is a story that's vibrant and genuinely promises some kind of delivery and then does it. Because too often it's the case that you can hear of a concept and not see it through. So downstairs, fantastic Roman ruins, fantastic amphitheater and so on. I had a, a good look at that on the way through. And a remainder of one of my favorite quotes, uh, which is written to say that cities are springing up at an unprecedented rate and we have become a burden on our world. Uh, of course, written 1,800 years ago by a Roman theologian. But I, I, I like that in the sense that it's 1,800 years old and you could equally apply it today. What I don't like is that there's a negativity about it. And I don't see that when I look at today's cities. And I don't see that when I see that how the social value way of delivering contracts can genuinely change a community. I don't see it at Battersea. I didn't see it at Birmingham. I don't see it in Liverpool where we're building a new hospital. You know, what I do see is a way of holding contractors accountable for social value. We think it makes a difference. We think it should. And instead of regenerating cities and doing it to them, we should do it with their communities. So conscious of my seven minutes, I want to leave you with that thought, if you like. I'm happy to take any questions on what we mean by that and how serious we are about delivering. Thank you. Thank you.